Good afternoon. I'm Dr. Dan Turner, Head of Programming and Outreach for the Georgetown County Library System. And we welcome you back again this afternoon for another installment of the DigiBridge Lecture Series. And this is the ninth out of 10 presentations. Uh, so we're getting towards the end, but that's okay. If you, if you miss a presentation, one live, uh, we put them all up on our Georgetown County Library YouTube page afterwards, so you can catch them there, um, and they're there for posterity. Uh, we've been doing this all through the month of July on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 2 p.m. and through the month of August, and our final one will be on Tuesday, September 1st with Marilyn Hemingway. And all of these were made possible by a, a wonderful bridge grant from the South Carolina Humanities, and that was funded by the National Endowment for the Humanities. So we're grateful for that. Uh, if you're watching today on Facebook Live, please ask questions during the presentation, and we'll ask those to our presenters afterwards. Just put those questions in the comments section of our Facebook uh, Live uh, uh, on Facebook Live for us. All right. And today we have another uh, wonderful lineup. Uh, we have with us Dedrick Bonds talking about the legacy of Georgetown's Committee for African American History Observances. And he's brought with him some guests to live in person in the studio, and he'll introduce them. And then one also who's joining us via uh, a live feed. Uh, so he, he brought company with, a, with him, and these are all uh, founders of the Committee for African American History Observances. And I'm going to introduce Dedrick, and he'll introduce his wonderful guest. Uh, Dedrick is a graduate of that uh, great school, Morehouse College. He performed several central roles in the Georgetown community, a reporter for the local newspaper, a call-in talk show host, managing director for the historic Winya Auditorium, and a history teacher at the Georgetown School of Arts and Sciences. Today, he's going to shed light on a special organization that helped to celebrate and preserve the many accomplishments of Georgetown's African-American citizens over the years. And he has chosen to do so appropriately enough by inviting three of the organization's founding members to join him in an act of living history. So we'll get to hear not just one voice, but several voices. Uh, so that's a, that's a great thing and really make that history come alive for us. Uh, and in, in fact, uh, Dedrick was telling us beforehand, uh, he's, he's part of that uh, living history. His ancestors too uh, have, have done a great deal in making Georgetown what it is today. So with that, I'll turn it over to Mr. Bonds and his wonderful guests. Thank you, Dr. Turner. Good afternoon. My name is Dedrick Bonds, and I'm honored to present to you a brief introduction of the Committee on African American History Observances. But before I do, I would like to thank Dr. Dwight, uh, Mr. Dwight McInvale and Ms. Heather Pelham and Dr. Turner and the rest of the staff here for assisting me in pulling off this presentation. I would also like to thank the Howard Alumni Association, the gatekeepers of the Dreamkeepers legacy. I would like to thank my wife, Leona Joy Bonds, the tech tutor, for her assistance, period, but specifically for her assistance with uh, today's stream. And lastly, but certainly not least, I would like to thank my guests, Ms. Barbara Hugh, who's joining us by stream, Ms. Bueller Priest White, to my immediate left, and Councilwoman Lily Jean Johnson to the far left for their contributions to a better Georgetown 40 years ago through CAHO and since. I have the honor today of presenting on Georgetown living history. No, the work or the events of this organization are not found in the annals of any history book yet. Rather, 
the work of the Committee on African American History Observances is written into the hearts of those that was impacted by it. The, com the Committee on African American History Observances began in earnest. It was initially an effort led by Ms. Kate Hood, a former Georgetown County librarian. Her goal was the recognition of Black History Month. While the mission would not change, its leadership would, perhaps altering the course of this organization in a good way for the next several years. CAHO, under rotating leadership of Ms. Beulah White and Ms. Barbara Hugh, and strong community stakeholders and resources like Ms. Lily Jean Johnson and Ms. Pearl Edge and Ms. Susan Grant, the focus became more of a localized, central one. Being bold and assertive, CAHO, the acronym for the organization, was able to honor Georgetown's local, rich African-American culture. Likewise, they were able to bring African-American notables and rich cultural experiences to Georgetown. CAHO were the organi organizers of the first Black History Parade in Georgetown County. They were responsible for hosting here in Georgetown actors and activists, Ossie Davis and Ruby D, Ebony Magazine editor, Lerone Bennett. CAHO has played host to, here in Georgetown, the likes of the Alvin Ailey Dance Troupe and the National Dancers of Senegal. They directed things like summer programs and basket weaving classes. Lunchtime lecture series were employed and successful for a number of years. Perhaps their lasting legacy as an organization was the creation of the Dream Keepers Award. Each year from 1983 to about 1993, CAHO recognized two Georgetown County African Americans for their work in making things better for all people. Some of those photos of those, uh, some of the photos of those phenomenal Georgetonians are on the reel behind us. These ladies and the people that supported and believed in their vision for a better Georgetown were able to accomplish phenomenal things. And I am grateful that they have agreed to share their time with me in this discussion of this organization and their early life's work. I would like to introduce again Ms. Hugh, Ms. White, and Ms. Johnson. We have a few questions that we would like to ask as we get an introduction to the work that CAHO did and its lasting legacy. And the first question would go to Ms. Hugh. And that question is, what was the genesis of CAHO? How did it start? Well, I think we have to look at the time uh, period in our lives and the lives of the children and families that we attempted to serve. Because in the late 60s and 70s, on the heels of forced integration, it was no surprise that among the loss that we were going to experience was the history of African American children and their families. And they would be lost with facts of our existence and our new lives as we tried to fit into mainstream America. And if we were to keep major parts of our culture and share them with the world, we needed to find ways to do so ourselves. So it was that in 1976, Beulah Priest White walked into my life, and it has never been the same. <laughs> she asked me to join a group that she was assembling to organize programs for Black history. And as I recall, like me, she had already been approached, as Dedrick said earlier, by Kate Hood, who was the then librarian for the county. And Kate had expressed to me, as she had to Beulah and to others, I'm sure, that during Black History Month, she put on displays and exhibits and other material related to Black history, but few Blacks were visiting the, audit, the library and almost no whites. Something immediately was positively detonated in Beulah, and of course that means it was detonated in me too. Beulah came up with a list of people to meet with us, therefore recruited to join us in turning a working board into an unformed organization where the two of us, and of course, Lily Jean Johnson, who you could always um, look up to and depend on, Thelma Spears, Mary Davis, who were teachers who were with um, Beulah where she worked. Mm -hmm. Amy Ladson was probably the only male on the board for years, I believe, <laughs> and Cynthia Heath and others later. Uh, I can't tell you how that uh, photographs, text on the history of Georgetown and its people. 
And we dug up stuff from our teachers here at her house for two hours just to tell you all of the wonderful things that one person had done. And that could be a person like John Boats who lived over in West End and we'd never heard his name before. The next hurdle after we got the group together was getting the populace out to programs and events. And this was an education in and of itself, getting the people to come out and I know that those of us who have children of our own or who had reared children, we've heard this. Why do we have to go? <laughs> and my son would tell me after he got older, he said, Mom used to drag us to every program there ever was that had black people in it. <laughs> 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 so I said, honey, that's why you're such a wonderful person now. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, um, I would say to you in Beulah's presence that she was the ombudsman for this program. Um, if she said we should have um, Ella Jenkins to come and perform for the children, Ella Jenkins was going to be in one of those auditoriums. I'm going to tell you that right now because we were going to put ourselves behind her to get everything done. I remember when um, the Allen Ailey Dance Company came, we, we were neophytes. And so Beulah is going back and forth to Charleston and I think maybe even Augusta to get the floor and stuff that they needed on the auditorium. But we thought our auditorium was perfectly fine until they gave her all these lists of things that they needed for a professional dance troupe to perform. But that did not stop her a bit. Everything they asked for, she provided. I just probably had to go even to Midwest to pick up something. I don't know. <laughs> but these things were provided and that's how dedicated we were to the Excuse me to the organization. Um, in order for a dance recital, for example, to go well, um, we would offer 25 tickets to corporations like a bank or something and admonish them to um, come with their families and give the others away to either their staff or other people. And if we had something at the schools, we would give the teachers the tickets free so that we would make sure that the children would get there. And it didn't take long for KHO, um to become the first and premier arts provider for Georgetown. And I don't think there'd be anyone who would dispute that. We were the first that I know of to have a calendar of events which appealed to most of the community. And we partnered well with other leaders in the area. I remember the very first exhibit that we had at the Rice Museum was one that Beulah has pulled together with the artists among us in our city, in our county. And it was superb. Opening night was, I mean, just everybody was so happy. People were in tears because we were presenting to them people with skill and talent that almost nobody but their parents who saw them working in a little back room knew about. And from then on, we, we partnered with the Rice Museum to have a month that we would bring some African-American um, person of talent. And we did that. I mean, Tom Feelings. Mm. Larry Levy, uh, I can tell you, Maxwell Taylor, who, who made some of the largest um, prints that were ever made out of linoleum. Um, we had Lerone Bennett that he already talked about, the Leo Twigs from um, South Carolina State. If there was somebody who knew somebody who did something, that person came through the doors of the Committee for African American History. Beulah White was, in the truest sense of the word, our director, even though she was not able to stay there for the whole time. I stayed with Keho for 18 years. And I'm closing this little talk by telling you they were the best, unequivocally the best and scintillating years of my life. Thank you. So Ms. Hugh has now thrown uh, the proverbial alley hoop to you. <laughs> <laughs> you <be> <laughs> To you, <laughs> and uh, and and this is what my research has 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 shown that uh, you were, in in no uncertain terms, the catalyst behind KHO. You were a large part of the driving force behind the programs, the folk who came, the the ideas that were put forward, and and just made Georgetown shine. What is your biggest, what do you think would be your biggest accomplishment with your time with Cahill? 
we've heard some major uh, accomplishments from Ms. Hugh, but you know, in my mind, what sticks out would be the Dream Keepers. Uh, even to the point of, and it's on this reel, the uh, the logo mm -hmm. of Cahill. Yeah. All of this was evoked uh, from my childhood memory. Mm -hmm. um, so it's lasting to me. What, knowing that this was just, man, 40 years ago, you would, yeah. <laughs> easy 40 years ago. That's amazing. What, what, are your <laughs> reflections on Keho at this point, 40 years old? Well, first of all, um, I'm a person that I love challenges and I get bored yes, easily. <laughs> <laughs> and I like to do things that are um, well done and have a gigantic impact. And having said that, um, I listen to, and I, I really thank you for doing this because I'd forgotten some of the things we did. <laughs> and the, the did um, illustrious people that graced the stage of historic Harvard High School. Mm -hmm. I'm very proud of the caliber of people we brought here. It wasn't entertainment. It was for education. Um, mm. Ruby D and, and Ozzie Davis were here, but their son was here, Guy. Guy did a week. Um, of arts residen residency at Choppy High School, and wow. he did a culminating um, school performance for the entire school wow. body. I remember Vertime Grovner. We had Sarah Johnson, a renowned violinist um, from Charleston, South Carolina. We had an integrated population of people who came through. And Having said that, I think the biggest accomplishment was having spent two years with Pearl Edge attending the school district's Board of Education meetings every month to get the building, we called it Miss Ozzy's Kitchen okay. when we were in high school. Can you tell why? Well, Miss Ozzy was the lead cook. <laughs> So for, for folk out there, the, 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 dream keepers, the Dream Keepers artifacts, these photos and memorabilia are housed on Gilbert Street at what I knew was the Howard High School band room. But these ladies, whose memories are a little bit longer than mine, just a tad, <laughs> remember the building as a classroom, and as the cafeteria for the old famed Howard High School. Yes. So that's what Mrs. White is, is talking yes. about. Yes. And add band room to that. Band, band well. room as well. Yeah, they used to have band in the auditorium. Wow. Yeah, but then they moved. Yes. When I was in the band, we practiced in the auditorium, wow. which was the largest and still is the largest it is. Um, auditorium in the county. It is. It seats 1,200. At any rate, um, if I couldn't go to the meeting, Pearl would go. And we did that for two years until the county <laughs> board of education finally deeded the property to us. Um, but before we accepted the property, um, having less than adequate resources, we asked that they put on <laughs> a new roof. And so they did. And the building still stands. And as you said, it's, it's currently a museum that houses our our memories yes. of what we did under yes. the auspices of Keho. Yes. So that would be the biggest for me because it's lasting physically and a so lot of people need to see things physically to it, you know, to acknowledge, acknowledge. Yeah, what, what has happened. But I think of Dr. Twiggs, I think of Mamie Fields whose granddaughter wrote um, Lemon Swamp and Other Memories and she was a cohort of September Clark, mm -hmm. a renowned activist. activist she came and we had a wonderful discussion with Miss Mamie in the um, Dream Keepers building, uh, Guy Davis as I mentioned, and also um, Dr. Twiggs was the first African-American artist to exhibit at the Rice Museum. Wow. And there was some delicate um, negotiations to get um, use of that facility. And this was not too long ago. No, uh-uh. And not too it, long ago. Um, it was a success. I still have pictures of it. And he was so tickled. And it was a joy to see, because he's nationally known. Mm -hmm. And for us to bring him to Georgetown 
and he actually sold a piece. And he said, Beulah actually sold a piece. He was so tickled. Um, I, I think of Dr. Twiggs he, if, and, uh, and Max Taylor. Max is internationally known, um, a fantastic artist, a great friend. And it was good to be able to um, show people what can be done. Certainly. I have one follow-up question for you. Now, you and I had this conversation when we, when we talked initially. I, the, when, when someone was selected as a dream keeper by Keho, um, it was an award banquet almost, and there was a one-of-a-kind limited piece of art that was given as a plaque in I believe that art is on this clip. If I see it here, I'll point it out. But can you give us the story behind Keho's logo? Um, Bob might remember. I don't remember other than they wanted, we wanted it done. And I knew Max. And I knew his area. And he agreed to do it. Um, actually, that piece is priceless. Yes. With his um, reputation in the world now, yes. it's, it's really, and it's just, he was able to um, imbue what we couldn't articulate, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which is something great artists can do. Can do. And right. we needed a logo, and I asked him, would he do it? And he said, yes. Uh, <laughs> what, what were the words I used here to describe the leadership? Bold and assertive. Bold, <laughs> bold and Listen, assertive. We did not know any other way. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. There was, a, I think, um, with Councilwoman Johnson and Barbara, there was a, a synergy that occurred with mm -hmm. under Kate, not to Kate. I knew, you know, um, and she was she was what we call good people. Yes, yes. Because she made the library um, very open. Because I remember growing up in Georgetown, we couldn't come to the library, wow. which is now a part of Prince George. They bought mm -hmm. the building. Yes. Mm -hmm. you couldn't go there. Black mm -hmm. people could not go to the library That's in Georgetown right. County. So when Kate came, and that hasn't been a long time. She opened up, and if she wanted to, um, I think one of the artists she discovered is a folk artist here, James Chatien. He lives on South Island Road. Yeah. That was one of the exhibits she, you know, she didn't, I didn't know James' work existed, you okay. know, that he was an artist. And if she wanted to do that, then it would behoove us to help her. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Certainly. So we came and we took it over. <laughs> <laughs> and I believe I said here uh, that it changed in a good way for the next several years. Yes, it yes, did. yes, yes, it did. Bold and assertive. Ms. Johnson, Councilwoman Johnson, in my interviews with you individually, there was a couple other women whose names kept coming up. Um, for their selfless sacrifices for the work of K.O., namely Ms. Susan Grant and Ms. Pearl Edge. What do you recall of the efforts to support the work of K.O.? Thank you, Dedrick, and my name is Lily Jean. <laughs> 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 but before I say anything about that, I'd yes, like to also share the name Candace Benjamin, okay. because yeah. at the time, right. yeah. she was working with the library. Okay. So she was one of the sources that introduced Kate Hood to, to us. Mm -hmm. That's Miss Benjamin's daughter, right? Exactly. Yeah. I don't know where she is now, yeah. but, but she was the impetus behind that as That's well. Right. That's right. Okay. And then, uh, Dedrick, you said that we sponsored the first African-American parade. Actually, parades, there was a time in between when nothing was happening. Okay. But our elders had a celebration every year mm -hmm. on January 1st. Mm -hmm. Got you. Okay. 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 Thank you. Uh, now, in those early days, you've already mentioned a number of names of people who were instrumental in getting things done. And uh, 
Beulah really had just moved back to Georgetown. Yeah. And as yeah. she said, she doesn't like being bored. <laughs> <laughs> We've got to get something done. And we were young and foolish then to think that we could actually yeah, do it. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. we were able to get it done. Um, Pearl Edge, and she's always had children in her house. Yeah. She was raising children at the time, but she was just as active as any of us, yes. perhaps who did not have any children. Uh, ABS was the yeah, only, only male on the board at one point. Mm -hmm. And he and I co-sponsored the African, well, we coordinated the African American uh, parade. And that was the lead off event for the month of February. Mm -hmm. But thank goodness we got past the month of February. Yes, ma'am. Yes. It was something that we could recognize and celebrate, celebrate year round mm -hmm. because we just have a history of people here in Georgetown, unsung heroes, we could call That's them, right. who That's did right. great things. Yeah. And we were able to recognize them through the calendars or through our Dream Keepers program. Yes, um, which um, I was very happy to be a part of. And uh, I'm getting a little emotional now when I think about all the things we did Sir. and presented to the community mm -hmm. who seemed to have fallen in line with us. Mm -hmm. And going back to Avon Ailey with those tickets. <laughs> You know, in some instances, we had the layaway plan. Yeah. Okay. 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 <laughs> we know that very well. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Because of what we were asking yes, in terms of the price of the tickets. Yes, ma'am. So a little down and a little <laughs> later. And by, by the time the performance came around, Sir. the person had paid for his or her ticket. Henry Smith oh, yes, was yeah. also a part yeah. of um, KHO. And he had a marvelous selection of African American yes, he did. Um, memorabilia. Yes, yeah. he did. And um, he had a history of all the black businesses on the West End. Mm -hmm. and, so he, and if I can just interject here, when COVID goes away with its ugly self, um, we would like to invite you all to go to the Dream Keepers building because there is a chart of black businesses mm -hmm. that hangs in, uh, in the Dream Keepers building. Mm -hmm. And um, after we acquired the building, uh, Barbara pulled together mm -hmm. a construction crew mm -hmm. and they worked without one brown cent. Wow. We provide the materials. Mm -hmm. So the renovation was done through people like Bob Miller, uh, Fred Sumter, yeah. Yeah. Melvin Hewell Sr., mm -hmm. um, who did the electrical Zanny, work? Zanny, Sonny Green, Graham. Zanny, Zanny Graham Zanny. did the electrical mm -hmm. work. Okay. And then the Anderson. Alice, um, Elias Stewart. Did the um, plumbing. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah that's right. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. coming back. Yeah. And Cephas Anderson had a furniture store yeah, at right. the time. Yeah, that's right. And um, he donated the appliances yeah. for the kitchen that mm -hmm. we had. Wow. Um, and later there were people like um, J Josephine Howard, mm -hmm. um, Lucille Josie, yes, ma'am, um, Mary Legendary Davis, teachers. Mm -hmm. yeah. that's right, mm -hmm. uh, Thelma, Thelma Spears, yes. yes, and many other Cynthia people Hazel. who were, hmm, Cynthia Hazel. That's right, Cynthia yeah. Hazel. Wow. Many more, uh, Modestine Ford. A lot of really need to write this yeah, stuff. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, in later years, um, after Mr. Drayden retired as principal. Yes, uh, ma'am. He was. Um, he and actually Evelyn Fagan mm -hmm. ran the building. Mm -hmm. They were there on a daily basis right. as if they were being paid. Mm -hmm. So Mr. Drayden actually developed a tour. Yeah of African-American sites mm, wow. in Georgetown. Mm -hmm. And he literally used to run those sites and we would get um, invitations from the chamber mm -hmm. uh, when they had, when we had tours come mm -hmm. to town mm -hmm. and they mm -hmm. had an interest in African-American mm -hmm. history, 
Mr. Drayton did the tour. Mm -hmm. And not only that, he and Florida Yeldale Yeldale. were the lecturers mm -hmm. at Brook Green Garden. Mm -hmm. And whatever um, remunerations they received, they donated mm -hmm. to CAHO. So this is, this is, as you can see, ladies and gentlemen, and this only is an introduction. It is not a, a documented history as of yet. We're going to work on that and get that done. But uh, this is living history, Georgetown. I have one other question, if I can ask it, before we um, go to any questions that could be online. And this is open to anyone. Some of an answer we may have already touched on, but I just want to uh, ask this clearly and give the participants uh, an opportunity to answer in their own words. But this is it. When the book is written, what do you want to be said of the legacy and the work and the contribution of the Committee on African American History Observances? When the book is written. So what would you want people to know and remember about your early work through CAHO? Well, I'd like to I would say, like people to know that. Go ahead, Barbara. <laughs> I was going to say, I would love people to be able to say that this is a group that did all of the right things, the best that they could, and will be honored for it in days to come, because those things will be replicated by children who are far younger than we are today. And that's what's really important, is that what we have done is a living testimony for what our children and grandchildren will do and are doing. Thank you. Ms. Johnson. I'd like to think that whatever we presented, that it was appreciated by the public and they were educated to, to what we were presenting and they were open-minded. Mm -hmm. And it made them feel proud because things they didn't think anything of mm -hmm we place in the forefront and emphasize that this, what you did, is of significance mm -hmm. historically. That's right. mm -hmm. So um, I'd like to think that what we did when the book is written, that it will say we did a good job because of our commitment, not only to the community, but the way we work together mm -hmm. to pull everything together to make it a success. And it wasn't always an easy task either. Sometimes we say the impossible takes a little longer. Yes, ma'am. We did the impossible. Yeah, there you go. There you go. And that's, that's, that's really what I take from this whole thing. But I'm going to defer to you. Georgetown soil is so rich with history. Um, wherever I've traveled, pretty much somebody knows somebody from Georgetown who has done something. Um, and having said that, the fact that we held that up, like Lily Jean said, and honored it. Um, the book has to get written. Has to. Not only that. Um, it's on the list. <laughs> we have to get the young adults, like you and, and your wife and others who are doing things in the community, to come together and really begin to have a resurgence. Yes, because it isn't yes. in the schools anymore. <laughs> oh, but that's another <laughs> discussion. That's what I'd like, you know, that we honored what was here, but it's just so much that's so still much. here. And people still making history. Yeah. Georgetown County is still making history yeah. that needs to be celebrated and honored. Well, uh, I am honored that the three of you, who I've always looked up to, have shared your knowledge your time and your resources, not only with the community over these past 40 years, but even right now. So I thank you and I appreciate you and your work and your legacy will speak for you. Um, are there any questions, Dr. Turner, online? Let me, I'll just read these off. Come back on. First, Certainly. let me, let's give a round of applause here. Yes, from our crew. <laughs> Thank you all so much. That was wonderful and exactly what we were looking for from this series, the, the DigiBridge series, because that, you know, really going in and, and 
delving into that rich soil that is Georgetown history and, and bringing, uncovering some things that have been buried and, yes, and given a, a living testimony to it that, uh, that nothing be lost. So th the book might be in progress, the, writing the book, and maybe uh, Mr. Bonds here will write that. But this is, we're getting good material for it, and it, it'll yes, be up there for posterity. So thank you all so much for doing it. And thanks to Heather Pelham and Truman Wins thank out you, there thank you. so much for, for recording it uh, so nicely for us. But um, we do have, we have some comments um, online, and mo mostly they're just saying, this is good, this is really good. <laughs> Another comment, love that someone, somebody knows somebody from Georgetown that's done something. Another comment. <laughs> uh, really? Yeah. <laughs> They like that. There are a lot of kernels of wisdom in there. Not a question, but a comment. I want to thank you all for just giving me a little more inspiration and a much needed boost to continue working toward a better community. Awesome. awesome. And so lot, lots of inspiration. Um, one uh, viewer out there said, my young daughter attended summer programs there, Unity yeah. Community uh, I'm sorry, Unity Community Youth Group was established there. Wow. So some, you know, some other connections being drawn out there. So uh, lots of lots of responses uh, coming in. And that looks like that was, that that's all we've gotten so far. Uh, folks may, may still come in there, but uh, that well, was wonderful. Well, if I may, uh, I will be re-airing this interview on my podcast and so people can feel free to reach me at dedrick at dedrickbonds.com for any other follow-up questions and I can make sure that those questions get directly to who they're meant for and get you a response absolutely so that's a that's a great source so the the conversation can continue forward Certainly. and 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 should uh, so and uh, I was just so impressed with how how y'all made so many connections and even though uh, these three women were so central to this organization you kept mentioning other names and other people and you know just expanding out and bringing in these other connections. So. What I found very interesting about all three of these women and I, I, I didn't have to get to Keho to, to know this but what they did for the community, what they did through Cahill, they did from the heart. And for, because none of them had to be here. They all chose to come back home and, and, and not just come back and exist as a wallflower, but they dug into what is Georgetown and, and made it better for everyone else here. And, and what was phenomenal to me is I know they did it from the heart because half of this stuff when we started talking, they didn't even remember. <laughs> so again, I'm appreciative of, of, the, of the energy and the effort that they put into this. I'm, I'm appreciative. Thank That's you. the advantage of being together and talking because it, it triggers yes. other memory. It yes, does. it does. Yeah. It does. Yes, it does. And it brings it back, and now we've got it, uh, got some, just a small part of those memories yeah. uh, back, and we got them recorded. Yeah. So. Uh, and that's a great start and uh, got the materials. So it's, it's a great thing to, to get things back going and to get y'all back talking and really remember all of those accomplishments. And they, they were lab labors of love. They uh, were. But really important ones to, uh, to Georgetown County and it's good to keep them alive and keep them going. So thank you so much. And I was very impressed with how the, the library, why, why was the library so central uh, to, to what you to what you were doing, you know that kept popping up. It seemed. Um, Candace was central. Mm -hmm. Being an African American, she was in and the right place at the right employee. time. That's yeah. right. Yeah. She was an employee. So that mm -hmm. So she was the connect. When, when Kate started, you know, with her dream, Candace reached to the community. And her mom was an educator. Yes. Miss Benjamin. Miss Benjamin yeah. was and, a secretary at, at Howard School. Yeah, at the yeah. school. Mm -hmm. So. But it, Teachers and, and librarians exactly. really yes. were That's how central it to, yeah. to what Kid Hood doing. was in the right place at, at the, right the right time, time. too, yeah. mm -hmm. because she was open. Open-minded. Open yes, and, and good people. She made you feel welcome. Yeah. yeah. It mm -hmm. is noteworthy 
that all three of these ladies are teachers. Um, they have yeah. left and gone to other fields or retired from it. But once you're a teacher, always. <laughs> you're always a teacher. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, yeah, no surprise there. So yeah. that's wonderful. And, well, thank you all so much thank for, you. Thank for, you. for being thank here. Thank you, Dedrick. Thank, yeah, Dedrick. thank yeah. you, Dedrick, for putting this all together. And uh, um, we really appreciate it. And it's exactly what what we were hoping for, building a bridge. We have to do it digitally right now, that's right. but uh, that, that means it lasts longer and, and hopefully we'll build a bridge to the younger generation too. That's all. Yeah. That's all. So, well, thank you again and thanks again to South Carolina Humanities um, and to our, our library director, Dwight McInvale, for, for making this possible. Thank, thank you. you all. Have a great afternoon. You too.